Uh, now called to order the April 25th, 2023 regular meeting of the Wellington Board of Trustees, time being 6.30. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I get a roll call, please? Certainly. Trustee Gator? Here. Trustee Daly? Present. Trustee Mason? Here. Trustee Teets? Here. Trustee Wiegand? Here. Mayor Pro Tem McDonald? Mayor Shosey? Here. Thank you. Are there any amendments to the agenda this evening? No. Are there any conflicts of interest related to the agenda this evening? Now we'll move on to item B1. Public comment, individual wishing to speak on non agenda items uh, are asked to sign up and then approach the podium, state your name and address. You'll be limited to three minutes. Hi, Don Peacock in Wellington. And uh, I apologize ahead of time because I'm going to scoot after this and watch from home because I tweaked my back and those chairs are not back friendly. <laughs> so um, I wanted to. Um, Invite everybody, let everybody know that this Sunday, April 30th at 5 p.m. at Zion Lutheran um, is our first Unity and Diversity Gathering. And we're going to, the purpose is to celebrate acceptance, support, and understanding for all members of the community. So uh, every month we're going to have a different speaker from a different spiritual background. And it's all going to be, we're going to be talking about, um, about love, unity, and compassion. Um, for any member that, you know, any, for anybody and everyone, but specifically to help with welcoming and supporting people who uh, represent that diversity label, you know, however it touches them, you know, whatever, whatever they feel is, is their place, that diversity label. So we are going to have um, light snacks and um, there will not be any childcare. And honestly, as a, a parent, I would probably, um, I would probably say maybe not younger than high school because of some of the topics that may come up. We don't know what's going to come up. So, but um, we, I did want to mention it and uh, welcome everyone, if anyone that wanted to attend and um, other than that, have a great meeting guys. I'll watch you from home. <laughs> Thanks Don. Thanks. Thank you. I'm going to cut out, too, just like she did, okay, <laughs> if you don't mind. Okay, um, 6836 McClellan Road, Troy Hammond, Chairman, the Chamber of Commerce. I wanted to come here tonight and give you hot off the press our annual directory. I wanted you to get it from me before you got it on the screen. Okay? Thank you, sir. There you go, sir. She's got a mailbox, right? Yes, we yeah. can get that to her. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much. One for you. All right, so we're excited about this directory this year. We put a lot of work into it. You'll notice it's a, a full gloss caption. But what I wanted to point this to, to you as well is uh, it, it, we did a, we wanted to do a, more of a community guide rather than just um, a directory for our chamber members, which we did do and covered very well in here. But we wanted to make sure we showcased all the hard work and things that this board and mayor and the staff are working on and bringing to completion, things that may go on that people don't go search out. You know, they're not going to go on the internet and search us out. It's in a magazine here where they can see it. We showcase things in here like the uh, welcome letters from the mayor and the administrator. We showcase some cool demographics of uh, Wellington, the, you know, it's residential commercial demographics. We showcase our downtown master, uh, not master plan, but revitalization. Uh, some very key commercial approved sites that are coming in the future that are interesting. We showcased... Um, our top eight events that we see in Wellington, they're in here and they've got great photos of that. A couple of other things we showcased was some, you know, our major critical infrastructure projects that you're gonna to bring to completion that are very hard to work through. I think they're probably the biggest in the history of our town, okay? And uh, it also showcases some, uh, uh, you know, very interesting uh, market opportunities that our town offers to the region that are very big and uh, Wellington is, going to be in a big position to capitalize on this down the road. And that's what we want to do. Uh, it also showcases our map and outlay of chamber members as well. One thing that we're really proud of in here as well is that we uh, showcased uh, 
various uh, women-owned businesses and professional ladies in their own right. And they're very nice write-ups on them and their successful business and what they do. Uh, very proud to do that. We haven't never done that before. And we'll probably pick another category as we go in the years before, but very interesting. We got, we got our parks in here and what's going on here, the big events for our parks and what's going on, because they're very nice. Our parks are great. Billy helped put this together. Um, Ross made it with our library and what's going on there, and they're doing a great job there. And uh, we're real proud of it. So I wanted you to be the first to get it from me personally, because I want to tell you I'm thankful for what you guys do and uh, helping us make this town together. And we're a partner. We consider ourselves a partner of the town. As we go forward, we want to work with uh, Caitlin and the downtown Main Street program and all that and the economic development to do what we can with business retention, that sort of aspect, you know, because that's where we come in. And uh, that, you know, we get some interest as well in other areas, but we're real proud of it. I wanted you to have it firsthand. Take time, read through it. I think you'll be proud of what you're working on, what you're doing. And, uh, and, and this is what it's all about, you know, in the end. So I know you take a lot of heat and you're working hard, but this showcases a lot of good things that you guys are doing. So I appreciate everything and always calling us when we can help. We did the fire department forum last night. It went well, you were there. Um, and any other thing we can do, there's great events coming up and we'll keep you informed of it. And uh, we just appreciate the town working with us and helping us do great things. So thank you for what you guys do. And your staff was wonderful getting me the information that I needed. Uh, I guess it was buried, my, buried in my records. All right, but it was good. So thank you very much, guys. And with that, I'm leaving. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you very much. Thank, uh, thank you, sir. I'll show you that. Guys. Okay. <laughs>Hi, Karen Eifert. I live in the Knowles, and I'm here to talk about the heat the prior mayor just mentioned. Um, my heat is this. I'm um, traveling around my son's transitioning from kids services to adult services. So I am all over this town and all over other towns everywhere for meetings and things going on. And I know I've brought this up before, but I think it's the right time to bring it up again. Um, the neighborhood's roads really suck. They really suck in the Knolls. They really suck in other places. I was traveling down Ronald Reagan and literally not even a whole minute goes by before da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum But I also complained about last year that the Knolls, we've lived here for now 14 years in August, has never received any road um, work or road improvement in the Knolls neighborhood itself. Um, and when I talked about that last time, Bob approached me and said that um, it goes through like a stage of like, you know, certain parts of town, get certain neighborhoods, get some of that attention work done. But I've been here, um, this is my 14th year, and we've never had any work done inside the Knolls. And it is getting quite a bit worse. And what's warming up outside, I'd really like to take Devin out on his adaptive trike and let him ride around our community and our neighborhood. But I can't do that when these cracks are so bad that that tricycle, which is adult size, gets stuck in those cracks and he cannot move it on his own. So I'd really like to put it back on everybody's fourth out of their minds. Our roads suck, our neighborhoods really suck. But we really need some work done on the roads, not just in the neighborhoods, but around town as well. But 14 years I've lived here and nothing's been done on the Knolls. I'm pretty sure by 14 years, they can get to the Knolls and it still hasn't happened. So there's the heat the mayor, the mayor was talking about that I would bring to your meeting. You're welcome. Have a good night. Thank you. Next. Next, we will move on to item B2, proclamations. There's going to be three of them this evening. First one is going to be a celebration of the Municipal Clerks Week. Uh, Mr. Ethan Moose, the town clerk, will receive the proclamation on town or on behalf of the town. Um, I will state the proclamation now. <clears throat> Whereas the office of the Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists as one of the oldest offices of public servants around the world. And whereas the office of the municipal clerk provides the professional link between the citizens and their local governing, governing bodies. And whereas municipal clerks have pledged to be ever neutral and impartial, rendering equal service of information and access to all. And whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of those who, whom have demonstrated commitment to leveraging their skills as municipal clerks in service to the citizens of our town. 
Now, therefore, I, Kaylor Shosey, Mayor of the Town of Wellington, Colorado, do hereby proclaim the week of April 30th through May 6th, 2023, as Municipal Clerks Week, and further extend appreciation to Ms. Patty Garcia, Ms. Charity Canfield, Mr. Ethan Moose, and Ms. Patty Lundy, and Ms. Verity Ketstaber for their service as Municipal Clerk with staff within our town. All right, the next one is going to be a celebration of Administrative Professionals Day. Ms. Patty Garcia, the town administrator, will receive this proclamation on behalf of the town administrative professionals. Administrative Professionals Day is observed annually in workplaces nationwide to recognize the important contributions of administrative professionals. And whereas the work of administrative professionals require advanced knowledge and expertise in communications, computer software, office technology, project management, organization, and customer service. And whereas the town of Wellington recognizes the importance and contributions of highly skilled administrative professionals to the success of office, office operations. And whereas the town is extremely proud of their talented, highly skilled administrative professional staff and officially recognizes, appreciates, and supports them and their professional growth. Now, therefore, I, Kaylor Shosey, Mayor of the Town of Wellington, Colorado, Wellington, Colorado, do hereby proclaim April 26, 2023, as Administrative Professionals Day and further extend appreciation to the members of the town's administrative staff. All right, and then the next proclamation is a celebration of Library Week. Um, Mr. Ross, the town's library director, and Ms. Mary Curran, the longest standing librarian at the town's library, will receive this proclamation. And I believe Ross is out today, so we'll be giving it to Mary. Yeah. Well, we are glad that you are here to accept it. Uh, whereas libraries provide the opportunity for everyone to pursue their passions and engage in lifelong learning, and whereas libraries have long served as trusted institutions for all members of diverse communities, and whereas libraries play a critical role in the economic vitality of communities by providing internet and technology access, literacy skills, and support for job seekers, small businesses, and entrepreneurs, and whereas libraries are inclusive places that promote a sense of connection understanding, civic engagement, and shared community goals. And whereas libraries, librarians, and library workers are joining advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. Now, therefore, I, Kaylor Shosey, Mayor of the Town of Wellington, Colorado, do hereby proclaim the week of April 23rd through the 29th, 2023, as Library Week in the Town of Wellington and urge all fellow citizens to visit our town's library and explore the wealth of resources available. All right, next up is a presentation, um, and it will be on the strategic plan update. Next, we'll proceed with item C1, um, which is a strategic plan update. The senior management analyst, Ali Sheldon, will present this item. Good evening, Mayor and Board of Trustees. Give me one second while I share my screen. Yeah, I already, oh, we got some fun little captions up there. 
All righty, good evening. Hallie Sheldon, Senior Management Analyst for the Town of Wellington. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about the strategic plan update. Um, as you are all here, uh, you adopted a strategic plan uh, for the year of 2023 and 2024. Um, typically, I will re be giving a quarterly update just on some successes we want to celebrate, um, but I also tonight I want to update the board and the public who are on here here in person and on uh, online about a new tracking method um, in terms of strategic plans, uh, which I'm really excited about. So to get started, if it will let me do that, maybe not. There it goes. Oh, still rusty. Sorry. All right. Um, to start, the four focus areas that the board outlined were fiscal responsibility, infrastructure, planning and development, and communication. Within those four focus areas, there are additional goals that are outlined in the, str the strategic plan. And then within those goals, we have some benchmark methods also that we are focusing on uh, this year and next. It's slowing down a little bit. There we go. Okay. To start off with fiscal responsibility, um, one of the goals that we are highlighting this quarter is to maintain financial transparency and increase operational efficiency. Part of that process is auditing um, our financial systems each year. So currently we have our 2021 and 2022 audit underway with a brand new um, auditing firm. They're doing a great job. I think uh, the finance department is really looking forward to what's coming out of that and reporting on that um, to you guys at a later date. Additionally, a great uh, tool and method that has been adopted uh, through this quarter, last quarter, uh, last year was the Finance Committee. They've done an excellent job of increasing that transparency and finding some efficiencies and um, just better solutions. Currently, they're working on final finalizing a financial policy that will really be foundational to our entire financial system. I think we're really looking forward to that. And additionally, we're looking at transitioning to a new bank. Um, that new bank is gonna be a local bank, which will be a huge benefit to us, just having um, all of our, our sources local. That's gonna improve operational efficiencies in terms of reporting and just like crossing our different channels. Um, this bank is gonna provide a lot of great opportunity. Our finance staff is working um, really hard to make sure that that transition is very smooth. Additionally, uh, in that financial, uh, that financial goal we have the to pursue funding sources for the positive direction of the community. Um, the most recent grant that town staff applied for is that Colorado um, open space recreation grant um, through the state for $100,000 for that parks recreation trails and open space master plan. Um, Prost, our uh, parks and recreation outdoor space and trails advisory board is doing a great job of um, creating goals and a vision for what that's going to look like and hopefully we can receive some of that funding um, to keep it moving forward. Um, the most recent grant we have received is from the Department of Local Affairs. That's $52,000 for a housing needs assessment. That was a priority project for the board. So we're looking forward to um, moving forward with that. And now we have some funding for it. And then um, town staff and the board have worked really hard on securing $5.6 million in grant funding already. So one of our priority projects is just executing and maintaining compliance within those grants we've already received. All right, so the second uh, pillar I'm gonna look at tonight is infrastructure. Uh, one of the goals for that infrastructure goal is to complete that water treatment plant and water reclamation facility. Those are huge undertakings and town staff is doing a fantastic job uh, in that public works department getting those completed. I know you guys received the utility report presentation that went into a, a, a lot more detail um, last work session and that explained um, different uh, buildings that are being worked on at each site. Um, everything is underway. Um, I, I currently on this uh, on the slide have on time listed, as mentioned in the utility report, there were a few weather delays that would very common during construction projects, especially this time of year. Um, staff believes that we're going to be able to make up those in, in due time. So um, that is why the status says on time, even though you have been told about those weather, uh, weather delays in the previous presentation. Another infrastructure goal is to review and develop partnership and enhance focus on transportation solutions such as street, bridge, facilities, sidewalks, accessibility improvements. That is a great big goal. Um, just for this quarter specifically, I wanted to highlight um, some great partnerships we're working on with the Colorado Department of Transportation in terms of grant funding, um, as well as just um, 
partnerships on the uh, Larimer County Road, County Road 9, uh, that intersection that you've received a lot of presentations on between Public Works and Planning. Um, those efforts are still well underway, as well as BDAMs. I believe a, a presentation is coming from um, town staff here in a few few months, few weeks about BDAMs. Um, so looking forward to that. And then additionally, I just wanted to highlight again the partnership with the Department of Local Affairs with that housing needs assessment. That's going to be really beneficial to our community. Another goal is to analyze and pursue stormwater solutions. I know we constantly hear the joke about the community pool that we have every time it rains. Um, a little bit of uh, some stormwater solutions we're working out. The stormwater master plan was a huge undertaking. Any master plan is a huge undertaking and our engineering staff did a fantastic job. That is actually complete. Um, that's very recent news. Um, that's a huge win in terms of benefits for our town. And we are already, um, town staff is already applying some of those uh, those concepts that were uh, uncovered in that master plan into the Cleveland Avenue improvement project. So they're working diligently to make sure that um, we are meeting compliance and we have some, some new solutions, which is fantastic. Alrighty, another one that I wanna highlight in that infrastructure goal is to ensure adequate current and future water resource use of our water resources and inform users about wise ways to save treated drinking water. Um, staff is currently working on pursuing additional sources of water. That is a significant project. Um, water is very complex and relationships are really important with that. So it's, uh, the town is very, benef it's very beneficial that we have town staff that is dedicated to that. Um, they are continuing discussions with uh, North Poudre Irrigation Company and, and other water source providers just in the general region. Additionally, we have a water efficiency program in place. Um, one of our the new things we did this year was uh, Garden the Box through Resource Central. It's an organization that's based out of Boulder, but they are found in all over all over Colorado. They've been working for over 30 years um, and providing drought resistant and native landscapes for residents here in Colorado that match the climate that we are in um, to reduce water. And so the Wellington partnered in that this year and we had a great turnout for just the spring. We were hoping to launch it for both spring and the fall and we already had 21 of our 25 boxes claimed that that was a discount code that they received through Resource Central. So they will receive um, a box of plants that is specific to their uh, landscape. And then they, it has like a, a detailed guide of where to plant and how much to water. And it's, um, I have one personally and it's, they're fantastic. So I'm excited for our residents on that. And then we'll open up the last four in the fall for fall planting season. There are just specific plants that survive better when you plant them in the fall. Um, additionally, we are providing irrigation audits free of charge for residents, HOAs and uh, non-residential users. So like some of our commercial properties could apply for this. And that just allows a landscape technician to come to their property. They run the sprinkler system, whether that's a rotor or an in-ground system, and they just explain where there's water waste, how they can improve their system. Um, it's shocking how much water you can waste just by like watering a little part of your sidewalk. So that's really beneficial. We still have our showerhead exchange program in place. And then um, that project accelerator grant is well underway. And we are holding a stakeholder meeting with our HOA leaders regarding ways they would like to be communicated with, ways they would like to partner with the town in terms of water efficiency practices that'll be held June 1st. Another goal within that infrastructure uh, pillar is to prioritize organizational strength to retain, attract, and support town staff. Um, town staff really appreciates that that is a priority of the board. Um, we had our first staff meeting this year on April 13th. It was an opportunity for us to engage with each other and recognize the accomplishments of our team, which was fantastic. Um, we are also improving onboarding processes to include staff tours. A lot of our staff is operating at a lot of different facilities and there's not a lot of opportunity for us to see each other day to day. So I think it's really beneficial that our human resources department is encouraging that those tours. So when you start with the town, you kind of know where everyone's located and how to get uh, every place. And then I just want to highlight that we've hired six new staff since the beginning of the year. So that is substantial and fantastic. We've got some really great team members that just came on board. All right, so I'm going to transition to the planning and development uh, pillar. First one I want to highlight is to complete that downtown master plan and parks master plan. Like I mentioned, um, Post is well on their way in creating their priority list, and we applied for that grant funding. We shouldn't be hearing, we, we won't be hearing from that um, organization in terms of funding until about mid to late summer. So once we hear about that, um, that funding will be transitioning into the RFP process um, and, and really taking that well underway. 
Um, and then in terms of the downtown master plan, there's a lot of steps that need to be taken in order to start that process. So the the best big one is the adoption of the zoning map, which happened at the April 11th board meeting. Um, so next steps will be to create a budget that we will propose to the board in 2024 and then prepare that RFP to reflect that budget. Another goal is to promote that small town feel through responsible growth and sound financial practices. Um, town staff just presented some updates about what's going on in Wellington and our development activities, what we expect um, and, uh, and highlight our, the expansion of our plants and what's going on there too. Um, and they presented that at the Biz West Real Estate Summit just recently. So that's a great opportunity for Wellington to get their, Wellington to get their name out there and um, just show that we are on the map. And uh, additionally, I just wanted to highlight um, the land use applications that are currently in review. It kind of shows you the, the different processes that are taking place at all times in the planning and building department. All right, that last pillar I'm gonna uh, highlight tonight is communication. Uh, one of our big su successes this quarter was an emergency preparedness town hall event that was held April 4th. I know a lot of you were there um, for that. It was a panel discussion that uh, discussed topics such as regional preparedness, personal preparedness. I know I learned a lot just about what I need to have ready to go at my house um, and just different responsibilities. Who's in charge of what? Um, how do they work together? Where does the town fall in place with our emergency management services. Um, we had lots of partners present. It was fantastic. We had the Lamar County Sheriff's Office. We had Sergeant Cherry was there for representing Wellington and then as well the Office of Emergency Management within uh, the Sheriff's Office. We also had Lamar County's Office of Emergency Management and our Wellington Fire Protection District. Anyone that is watching online, uh, that QR code is active. So if you want to sign up for this no code alert, I have to I have to plug it a little bit. Um, this is just a, a benefit for you to get alerts as emergencies are happening. Um, it's a really great resource. If you Google NOCO alert, that's also an opportunity for you to sign up. Um, another goal within communications was to promote inclusive language and improve access to local government. One uh, big undertaking that I know our communication specialist is taking on right now is that Web 508 compliance plan. I'm not going to act like I know the whole undertaking of what that is. Um, it is an extensive process, but um, it basically is an entire website redesigned to ensure accessibility. Um, there is a lot that goes into that. The objective is basically to improve the experience on our desktop version and our mobile version, um, language, alternate text, content updates, kind of you name it. It's an it's a extensive process um, that our, our communication specialist is going to be taking on, um, which is a fantastic way for us to improve that access to our residents. Another one I want to highlight is to increase engagement and communications with all of our partners in town. Um, our town administration just presented to the Senior Resource Center on April 12th, just giving updates about what's going on in town, best ways for um, the Resource Center to reach town facilities and the needs of um, the, our administration to have in place. Um, additionally, in terms of local business engagement, we um, Town staff worked really hard to, about the water rate adjustment because that was really targeting a lot of our businesses and it would substantially impact their bill. Just um, direct mailers were sent. Um, and then additionally, we have uh, an improvement process underway for our business licensing. It's uh, much needed and we we're working very hard to make that happen. Um, in terms of improving access to local government, this is kind of what I was talking about, about at the beginning. We have a new way that we're gonna be tracking our strategic plan. So as opposed to me giving you um, the board and the public a presentation every quarter, we wanted to add to that. Um, I will still be giving presentations every quarter, but um, I think it's important in terms of transparency. I know all town staff and the board agree it's important to keep our residents updated as much as we possibly can. We are hoping that this is going to be that solution and we are open to feedback as we adopt this new um, this new plan. If it is not beneficial, we can make some adjustments. But the goal of this is to, on a monthly basis, update about priority projects within the strategic plan. So um, this is just an example. This is not real time or anything like that. But um, for example, one of the goals, the benchmark goals within the planning and development uh, pillar that the board outlined was to complete a cemetery needs assessment. One of the things that we have to do first is to review the records we have in place. There is significant training that is involved with new staff in that, as well as just a records management system that we need to get into place. Um, it, it basically shows the steps that we are going to take to get there and we where we are at. So this would be a real-time um, 
spreadsheet on our website that residents can see under the Board of Trustees page that will see where we're at. And so if it says delayed, there'll be an explanation as to why. We would love to complete a cemetery's needs assessment, but first we have to do X and then that's why it will show it is delayed. We are hoping this is an opportunity for um, the residents to engage with staff, reach out, ask questions, that by all means, that's what we're looking for. Um, but we just wanna ensure the transparency of what is going on with taxpayer dollars and um, just promote some inclusivity in terms of making residents feel like they're a part of this plan too. And with that, that is my presentation for the night. Thank you. <clears throat> uh mr moose when we have comment from trustees can we keep a time of three minutes from this meeting and every meeting moving forward certainly mr mayor thank you all right on to the consent agenda for this evening it consists of the board of trustees regular meeting minutes for april 11 2023 may i get a motion to approve so moved i'll second may i get a roll call please Certainly. Trustee Gator? Yes. Trustee Mason? Yes. Trustee Daly? Yes. Trustee Teets? Yes. Trustee Wiegand? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem McDonald? Yes. Mayor Shosi? Yes. Thank you. All right. On to the action items. Uh, we'll proceed with first is a resolution establishing hours of outdoor watering in the town of Wellington. Senior Management Analysis, Ali Sheldon, will present this. Ms. Sheldon. Did not realize that was first on the agenda. I apologize for walking all the way back there. You're fine. Um, good evening, Mayor Board, Board of Trustees, Hallie Sheldon, Senior Management Analyst. Um, this is the third meeting that you will be uh, discussing uh, outdoor watering restrictions. So I will go through this presentation uh, rather quickly just because you have seen this information. This will be your third time seeing it. So um, quick background, approximately half of our water customers are uh, use treated water for outdoor watering. Um, we have had high demands uh, for our, our treated water during the summer. Um, and so something that we have been doing for the past three years is outdoor watering restrictions in terms of days and hours based on address. Uh, the town of Wellington is in a very unique situation right now. It's hard to do peer community reviews in terms of what are other communities do re doing because they do not have the same um, strain on their current treatment facilities. So a lot of these uh, this discussions we've had these past three meetings have been um, how we are looking forward to 2025 in which we can talk about opportunities um, in terms of outdoor watering practices um, once our plants are up and running. Um, our current plant will increase the town's treating water capacity at the conventional facility um, on Reservoir 3 and um, really just the plants are going to be pushed really hard the next two years while we are finishing those expansion projects. So um, to limit consumption and, and limit the amount of um, stress and risk to those plants, we are, we are recommending outdoor watering restrictions. This is just um, a graph that you have seen several times, but you are not seeing this. Hold on. I apologize to everyone online. Can you see that now? That's so funny. Okay, apologize. Um, so this is a graph you have seen several times before. It just talks about the, the consumption and production rates um, at our three plants um, for the past five years. So as you can tell, it varies. Um, I wish we had a crystal ball to talk about how much precipitation we are going to receive and whether we are going to need these restrictions or not. But I think um, we have seen time and time again that being proactive with these restrictions so that we can communicate early and effectively has been beneficial. Um, as you can see in this graph, 2020 was uh, quite a year of stress for our facilities. Um, everyone is home from COVID and we also had, I mean, I know I took up gardening, you know, it was, everyone was out working, working on their lawns and stuff. So um, it's just, we're trying to prevent um, just significant strain on our plants. As I mentioned, there's just operational risks. We um, are worried about infrastructure failure. Do we have aged equipment? We are so looking forward to the equipment that is coming in, they, but it will not be ready um, for this outdoor watering season um, well, in, well into next year's outdoor watering season. But what is exciting is uh, the new plant is coming and we are looking forward to it. And we also have just have a lack of redundancy and in, in terms of supply and treatment and distribution. So we wanna make sure that we are 
again, being proactive as opposed to reactive. The intention of town staff in terms of communicating this, these restrictions would be if the board is to pass um, this resolution tonight, water bill inserts uh, will be provided um, and social media will be uh, an active form. So people will be receiving a paper version of this communication as well as uh, an uh, electronic version. You have seen this graph, I know, through so many presentations, um, but again, it just explains uh, the current treatment capacities and um, how volatile that system can be and how important it is for us to, to really prioritize our infrastructure. Um, I also just want to highlight that uh, while water restrictions are going uh, are something that town staff are recommending, uh, we also have other water efficiency programs in place to try to uh, reduce water consumption. Um, like I mentioned, that garden in the box program during that strate strategic plan update, as well as the irrigation audits. Um, and then education and engagement is well underway with bill stuffers, event promotions. Um, we really want to get the word out just in general about tips and tricks because it's going to help save them money long term too. Um, and then we also have some indoor programs in place, but um, I don't need to go into those tonight. I will stand for questions. I know I ran through that really fast. So um, I will, I'll be here for questions and thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, we'll start with Trustee Wiegand. I did not hear you mention how you were gonna enforce it. Yes, so um, the intention is in, in the resolution that's in your packet tonight, um, the, the enforcement, the first warning of a violation will be an, an informational uh, opportunity for us to provide them a door hanger or directly hand it to them, uh, just explaining what the restrictions are. And then that second violation would be a summons to municipal court. Well, I appreciate what you've done. And uh, I really don't like water restrictions, but I understand that we got to do it, especially with our limited capacity. You know, our town keeps growing. It may not be growing as fast as what it has, but it's still putting more of the strain on it every year. So uh, hopefully in two years, it'll be done and uh, it'll be behind us. Trustee Teets. This is awesome. Thank you for the presentation. The packet that you presented was extremely useful because I was able to sit down and actually explain some of this to my husband to help further his understanding of why we need to conserve our water a little bit more. Um, the only thing I didn't see in here and something I would like to see is in previous years, we had signs that went at the entrances of subdivisions. Do you guys plan on implementing Perfect. That would be the only thing in that in here I did not see mention, but was really useful, I think. And yes, we received great feedback from, yep. from residents about that. We plan to do that as well. Perfect. I have nothing else. Perfect. Thank you. Trustee Gator. Yes, uh, thank you for presenting. And I appreciate uh, all of staff getting this in front of us multiple times. So this wasn't just vote on this today. And that was our only discussion. So much appreciated. Um, I appreciate that we got things um, squared away in terms of enforcement on this. Um, I do continue to think that we should focus on in education, work with the community versus the mandatory, um, but I appreciate the process we've come through to get here. Thank you. Trustee Daly. Um, I think an important thing for the public to understand as well for those in the room and online is nowhere in these restrictions or recommendations or, you know, for times of day and days of the week watering, anywhere does it say to not water your lawn? It says you would do it during this time of the day and on these days of the week in order to balance the load on our systems, right? And the times of the day are the most efficient times in addition to not being on the high volume times during the day, but also the time that the water won't be won't evaporate because it's hot during the day. So following these guidelines actually save you money. So I want to point that out too, because you have to water your, your yard less when you do it during the appropriate times of the day. Um, so these guidelines are actually helping you to have better watering practices. Um, and then all of these also maintain the best practices in our area for watering practices for yards to promote uh, root depth, for yards to have sustainable and, and better grass. So um, I wanna make sure that people realize that by no means should anybody's yards be dying or crisp or horrible from these practices. Everybody's yard should be fantastic and great. 
it's just uh, we're we're encouraging to make sure that we're being good neighbors to each other, protecting our assets and our and our water, um, and lowering your own bill by making you use less water and helping you to use less water. So I think it's fantastic. And I'm really looking forward to the community um, promoting this and, and being good, good neighbors to each other. So thank you. Thank you. President thank you Mason. for the presentation, Ms. Sheldon. Um, yeah, obviously this is really important for us as far as uh, our upcoming infrastructure goes. Um, obviously, you know, in my opinion, this is all about protecting those water plants until they come online. So, uh, yeah, I think this is good stuff. I'm glad we've got to this point. So, perfect. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Steph put a lot of time into this, and I really appreciate all the hard work and the information. Um, great work. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, we got to protect the plants to protect the people. So, it makes sense. Great work. Good presentation. I'm glad that we got time to go through it. So I really appreciate that. Are there any comments from the public on this agenda item? Christine Gator, I just wanted to say that I agree with um, Trustee Wiegand that this is, um, I think the water has gone down because um, water bills went up, our rates went up. So I think the the water restrictions is redundant and not needed. Um, I also want to talk about the enforcement. Um, I'm assuming that the code enforcement officer doesn't work 24 seven. So to have rules that he can't enforce kind of um, doesn't make any sense. Um, so if we can only um, water certain days of the week, but he doesn't work um, in the evenings, he can't enforce those. So might I recommend that you just make um, rules that he can actually enforce? I don't know when he works, but my guess is eight to five, Monday through Friday. Thanks. Thank you. All right, uh, may I get a motion and a second on this agenda item, please? There's no one. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve res resolution number 16-2023, a resolution establishing uh, hours of outdoor watering. I'll second. Are there any final comments or direction for Board of Trustees? No. Nope. All right. Hearing no further comments, may I get a roll call on the motion, please? Certainly. Trustee Mason? Yes. Mayor Pritchett McDonald? Yes. Trustee Gator? No. Trustee Daly? Yes. Trustee Teets? Yes. Trustee Wiegand? Yes. Mayor Shosey? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next will be item E2 in ordinance amending and recodifying chapter 13 of the municipal code concerning municipal utilities. Ms. Charity Canfield, the finance director, and Megan Smith, deputy director of public works, will present this item. Good evening, Mayor and Trustees. Uh, Megan Smith, Deputy Director of Public Works. Good evening. Um, Charity and I are coming tonight to review with you guys, with you all, excuse me, um, the some updates to Municipal Code Chapter 13 uh, addressing municipal utilities that we reviewed with the board um, in discussion in a work session in February. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I don't have a presentation for you this evening as it's a little bit dry to put on a bunch of slides, just a bunch of bullets. So I do have the, the bullets of the changes outlined in the memo in your packet this evening. Um, quickly, just around the utility system requirements. Um, it was the same pieces that we had touched on during that board discussion around kind of some broad language changes around renaming um, or having the, the code use the term wastewater instead of sewer. That way it matches our actual water enterprise. Um, as well as kind of uh, being able to distinguish between stormwater and wastewater. Um, a lot of times sewer, depending on where you are in the country, that's an interchangeable term. 
uh, re removing um, some language around uh, volume of raw water requirements, as well as some language that's in there around bringing three quarter inch, greater than three quarter inch taps to the board. Those are just ways that we don't operate any longer. Um, we have uh, both of those are adopted by ordinance or resolution and are included in other um, documentation in the town. We're looking at updating um, language to clarify prohibited discharge standards um, so that there is not duplicative or redundant language, there is, or rather contradictory language. Um, so we're cleaning that. Um, requiring some uh, adding language to require commercial customers to with grease interceptors to submit that documentation to the town so we're able to track um, and monitor um, the how they're functioning in order to protect our wastewater treatment plant investment also adding some language requiring um, commercial customers and multifamily um, customers with backflow prevention devices to have to submit those testing reports on an annual basis as well that's a, a, a state regulatory compliance standard that we have to meet on our drinking water side. Uh, and then beyond that, just kind of making a sweeping removal of one whole section that had been with review, um, everything within that section had been captured in, in articles one and two. Um, and then with that, um, I guess maybe the, the broader, um, trickier piece is that we are moving forward with, um, as we discussed, or proposing to move forward with the water yield changes for the two water sources that are outlined in code right now, which are both the North Cooter Irrigation Company shares and then uh, the uh, Colorado Big Thompson Project units. Um, so it's reflected in the memo packet is reducing that yield that we allocate per share or per unit to the two acre feet per share for North Cooter and a half an acre foot per unit for Colorado Big Thompson Project units. And that is in line with what was discussed um, during that board session. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Charity. Um, thank you. I think there were just three major changes with the utility billing. Um, we're changing the due date back to the 25th of the month and making code reflect what had practice been or practice was been. Um, delinquent letters will be sent out no later than the 15th of the month in lieu of door hangers, 10 business days prior to shut off. So that way we have less staff time on the ground, physically hanging door tags on people's homes. Um, and the landlord initiation of the water utility accounts. So that way we have a stricter, more structured way of identifying who's responsible for our water utilities. With that, we'd love to field any questions that you might have. Trustee Mason. No questions. I think we've seen most of this before and uh, appreciate you guys getting all the language out here. There's a whole bunch of changes that need to be make and made. And uh, yeah, it looks good to me. So appreciate it. Trustee Daly. Uh, I agree. We've seen a lot of this content before uh, uh, repeatedly and had it uh, explained to us multiple times in public meetings. So I really appreciate that and seeing it all together consolidated so we can consider it all together, I think is the best way to do it. So I appreciate you, you all doing that. So thank you very much. I don't have any questions. Trustee Gator. So just a couple of clarifications. So when we say we're reducing the acre foot, we're saying when you bring, so for example, if you're Building a house, you're required to bring X acre feet per house as a developer. And then when we're saying, if you give us one share of North Poudre, we're saying because of drought and other conditions, there is less acre feet. So you would, in essence, need potentially more shares to fulfill the requirements. But then we're separately from this, or is this included, we're also looking at adjusting that building requirement dedication as well, or is that included in this? The raw water dedication um, is not included in this okay. update. So this is just for the municipal code piece. Okay. And then that raw water dedication and, and cash in lieu of dedication will come separately. Will be separately. Yep. But the idea was a more or less balanced because this is addressing the piece of how much comes with a share of water, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And then the other half of that is when we'll make some tweaks to the, potentially make some tweaks to the um dedication portion that's required so right? how how much water we yes. think a user will use and then there's how much water will yield from oh. the the right that's turned right. in okay perfect um and then wanted to clarify so we are adjusting it to where the utility bill is now in the name of the owner of the property they can ask that it be put in their tenant's name but they are still ultimately the one who's responsible for the bill yes and they have to initiate the change for the landlord to have the tenant to have the have tenant take over that. Okay. We're, we're eliminating the process that anyone can call and just say, um, I'm okay. moving into this process. 
property, we would like the water service in our name. Okay, perfect. And then the other question that I had was on the readings for um, the word, when we can't read the meter that we do an estimate, mm -hmm. I believe. The language is a little, sorry, I'm trying to find the page. I had it and then I moved to a different page, but it said basically if it's, if we can't read it because we can't get to it, if it's unsafe, but then it also just kind of said for any determined reason to do an estimated reading, do we have a clear policy around when we do and don't do estimated readings? Because I know that's something that's been brought back a few different times is, you know, I got this estimated reading. I don't really understand why it's done. So that's actually something we've addressed internally in terms okay. of our data systems. And the only time an estimated read pops up is if the data coming from census, our meter reading software into Cassell is not accurate. And we have spent months and months making sure that we can identify those issues. So an estimated read right now is a really big one-off. And okay. what we do is we take the previous three months, same time last okay. year, do an average and do an estimate based off that if it coincides with their current usage. Um, where that gets difficult is the landlord tenant accounts because we would have a different tenant possibly oh. last year with okay. a different amount of people in the home. So it's one of those things where we make our best educated guess to see current usage trends okay. as opposed to last year's usage to provide an estimated read. But those, you're talking maybe one to a month out of 4,000 caps. Got it. Okay. So we, we really, okay, good. That's what I'm looking for, just making sure. And then if we can, if we have that written down on kind of what the process is and what determines that, I, um, if, even if we just circulate to that, the board of trustees. So if we ever do get questions. I think we can bring that later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just, I see that. So thank you very much. Perfect. Trustee T. This is amazing. So the red line document is actually one of the most organized and well put together documents I've seen since I've sat up here. I love that it details every single change that you guys have done to this. Um, it makes it very easy to read easy, even on like a residential side when someone's coming to view this information. The one question I had was the water source, one share of North Poudre Irrigation. Um, did it decrease to two? Because here it says 2.4. Yeah, it did decrease to two from 2.4. So was it currently is 2.4. And if this is adopted, it will go to two. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know that that's not crossed out in the document. So it goes to the 2.4. So just FYI and a note to look at. It wasn't redlined. It It is actually. It, it, yeah. If you zoom in on it, that there there is a line. It's just because the four ha has the bar across. You can't you can't. It's like one pixel off. But if you look really close, it is there. Yeah, ours it doesn't show it. So I just wanted to make sure that we weren't voting to approve the two point four again, and you guys had to come back to us later to have to re change it. And trusted it's the ordinance includes the non red line version. So make sure the the key point is to go to that document where it says two point uh, okay. The red line is there merely for the board's reference. So. Got it. Perfect. Then no, other than that, I don't have anything else. Thank you. Appreciate all the work and the detail that you went in. The few questions I had, uh, Trustee Gator already got. So thank you. Perfect. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. This was a huge undertaking. Like I'm not even sure if Megan and Charity could calculate the number of hours that were probably put into the recodification of this chapter but I'm sure that it was significant. And thank you so much for your hard work and for setting the town up for success in the future, because I think that this code is really gonna help guide um, the town in a responsible way of moving forward with our water system. Thank you so much for all of your hard work on this project. This is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I'll pair it, Mayor Pro Tem, I mean, you guys did a heck of a job. This is wonderful and it's going to really set us up for success in the future. And I know you guys spent a lot of time going through this and spending time with us and going back and it's appreciated. So thank you very much. Actually, if it's not too out of line, I would love to call out Mike Flores, superintendent of the wastewater facility and Jesse Tullifsrud, the collection and distribution superintendent, who both read every single word of the whole chapter, which is a lot. <laughs> Yes. So thank you to everybody. Thank you.
Um, all right. Are there any comments from the public on this agenda item? Karen Eifert, I live in the Knowles. Um, and you probably said this, and I probably just didn't understand the way it was said, but it sounded like to me um, when you're talking about the tenant and the landlord, that the landlord has to apply for that to be put into the tenant's name. And again, just want to bring up something I did before. There's a lot of programs that if that landlord is not putting that tenant's name with these um, utilities, then that tenant is not will not qualify to get help from the state of Colorado, from Catholic charities and from other charities around as well. And so I really, I don't know how this is done, but I hope there's something in place that can educate landlords that you really must allow if you want this, this if you want your utilities covered and your tenants need assistance with the utilities, you really need to allow them to put it into their name and not the landlord's name so that they can qualify for assistance to get those utilities paid and keep their families warm with lights and all the great things that utilities provide for families, because that's really a necessity for any low-income family, um, any any family that help falls on hard times and just needs a little bit of help. You can't get that help without those utilities being in your name. So I hope there's something in place to encourage landlords in the town of Wellington to allow for the tenants to have the opportunity to put those utilities into their name. That would be a great safeguard for families across the board, I think. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to address that when I was researching that change in the code, I did reach out to LEAP and it is not a requirement to have the water bill in your name to be eligible for assistance. So that will not be a hindrance for tenants who do not have the water bill in their name. Thank you for clarifying that. All right, can I get a motion and a second on this agenda item, please? I will make a motion to approve ordinance number 04-2023 in ordinance amending and recodifying chapter 13 of the municipal code concerning municipal utilities. Second. Any final comments from the board on this? No. Perfect. May I get a roll call on motion, please? Certainly. Trustee Mason? Yes. Trustee Gator? Yes. Trustee Daly? Yes. Trustee Teet? Yes. Trustee Wiegand? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McDonald? Yes. Mayor Shesey. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. On to reports. Other reports from the town attorney, Mr. Sapienza. Um, the board's enthusiastic review there of the utility or utility code in chapter 13 highlights uh, a project that's kind of been in in the works for a long time, and that's a regular review of chapters of the town code, which is a really exciting thing. Um, you, the utility recodification of Chapter 13, um, as Megan mentioned, included a lot of staff looking at a lot of different pieces of it, the, the pieces that directly impact their jobs. It included meetings of at all levels of the town. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a project that lasts a long time, and it, but it's important. Um, being the town code, it needs to be reviewed on a regular basis to make sure that it complies with state law, make sure that it properly demonstrates and reflects what's being done at the town, and you know, the code's been around a long time, so sometimes it just needs to be cleaned up. Um, so one thing that we're working on is bringing to the board, uh, ideally, and test this out starting in uh, the third quarter, um, kind of a quarterly code chapter is, is the idea. Um, and what was nice with the chapter 13 is it was brought forward with some potential, some potential changes that needed to be made um, as part of a work session before the full thing was brought. And so, you know, kind of a multiple meetings to give the board plenty of time to look at it, to have presentations that are not just looking at the actual language, and then finally bringing a, a, the full package with the red lines so you can see what's being changed. Um, and so we're going to be looking toward quarter three to start that out with something that I've been trying to get moving for uh, a long time, which is uh, chapter 10 of the municipal code. Two years. It's. <laughs> I'll be honest. The the one of the red lines that I have uh, is dated back in 2019 that I wanted to make some changes. So it's been a while, um, but but I think it'd be a really good project. Um, and it and you know 
especially parts of our code that have been adopted sort of piecemeal over the course of decades. Um, it's, it's, it's important that we go revisit those. So um, we'll be kicking that off in quarter three. We'll have some more information. And as if that's successful, ideally, we'll, we'll each quarter bring forward new chapters or smaller sections if they need to be more bite-sized. But um, I was really um, happy with the enthusiastic response there to chapter 13. So look forward to more of that. Perfect. Thank you. Other reports, Ms. Garcia. Sure, so I'm equally as excited about the code changes. It's it helps it helps us work with and when we start getting calls from community members with questions and there's there's parts of our code that conflict with each other. This this will help that and help staff do their jobs. Um, as far as reports, we're working charities working on a budget calendar, so that'll be provided to the finance committee and to the board of trustees here shortly. Um, staff's going to go through it this week and you know, start finalizing some of those dates. So you guys can start lining out the dates that you really need to be at a trustee meeting. Don't take any vacations during some of these dates that we'll be having work sessions and things like that. Um, Kelly Hadley and I will be leaving potentially tomorrow morning for a conference in Glenwood Springs. It's the Colorado, um, it's the Colorado City and County Managers Association Conference. Weather's not looking great, but we will see what the morning brings. Kelly and I are both presenting, which is really fun for us to be able to um, showcase Wellington in and how um, I'm talking about how to build a great team. And Kelly will be talking about um, her work and her responsibilities as a deputy city manager, town manager in an organization. So really excited to be able to attend and thank you for approving the budget to allow us to go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other staff communications updates? No. Or reports? Trustee Wiegand? None at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trustee Teets? No, just very excited for the volunteer appreciation dinner that's going to be hosted tomorrow night. Yep, we actually were able to, at the last minute, add an additional trivia night for anyone who is, attain and is attending. So there'll be a, a chance to stay a little bit later and have some fun with our volunteer community board, which I'm scared because I'm not good at trivia, but very excited about in general. Um, but no, and just the support from our town clerk has been honestly massive, like the communication spot on. I can't, it's part been wonderful planning this. So, and a lot less complicated, believe it or not. So I enjoy that planning very much. So, so other than that, I don't have anything else. Trustee Gator. Uh, nothing new to report. Um, just one question and really appreciate mayor, uh, really working to keep us on track. That's been awesome. I know at a few of our meetings, we've had kind of a section for board questions and board comments and separated that, um, something to think about. Maybe there's a possibility to bring that back in because for example, if we have questions for staff and then it takes them time to answer the questions and then we run out of time to actually talk about anything, but if we can separate that out. Um, maybe look into a way to do that, but I appreciate your working to keep us on track. I love having my evenings back and being home at reasonable hours. So appreciate that. But just, I know thankfully we had a lot of work sessions, so we were able to ask a lot of those questions ahead of time, but every now and then we do have items where there's not a chance to go into it in detail. Um, so if we could think about some ideas on that, it'd be great, but appreciate what you're doing to get us through meetings. Thanks. Trustee Daly. This Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon, uh, we'll be celebrating Arbor Day from the town of Wellington. And uh, you'll see some volunteers there from the pros board. Um, the, you will have the opportunity to get a free sapling tree, free tree and to plan to dream. So, uh, and we'll be planning a tree to replace um, some of the older ones that had to be taken down at Viewpoint Park. A lot of people also don't know where Viewpoint Park is and it's, um, you know, our park with the biggest field that we have available. So like if your kids play football, you know where it is. But if your kids don't play football, you may have never been to this park before. So um, if you hit up the town of Wellington's Facebook site, you'll be able to see, and for this reason, they put a small little map on the flyer um, because Viewpoint Park is, it's it's not obvious. There are signs, but it's not one that you would normally drive by. It's in the middle of the neighborhood. So um, please come to that. 
It's totally fa- family friendly. Kids will love it. They get to participate in planting this tree with their dreams and take home a little sapling tree. So that's what's going on this weekend. And I think um, that'll be super fun. Uh, the other item I wanted to mention, and I got to go to the kickoff or the, the release party for this um, directory. Um, I wanted to talk about it and give a special thank you out to the chamber. Uh, the chamber has really been picking up a lot of slack where we have, um, you know, haven't been putting specific attention towards economic development. I know we do that across the board in a lot of our different departments, and but we haven't done um, like these kind of marketing efforts it, in the past. And I know we're headed this direction, so I'm really excited about it. So I think the fact that the chamber has taken on this effort in a different method this year um, is really admirable. And I wanted to give them thank yous because it is more of a community guide than just a directory of their members this year. And also in the middle of it, if you happen to come across one, it does have the map of Wellington, which does have viewpoint park in it. So if you need extra help in the finding that park, all the parks are listed in here too. So. Um, but this this is really great, and one of the my favorite parts of it is it shows the before and after pictures of the revital revitalizing downtown grants, um, and then you know those facelifts that most of our our uh, businesses got downtown. So, and some of the stories behind those, and this is a wonderful wonderful um, magazine this year. And also, I wanted to put a thank you out there for North 40, because they're the reason why we have up, upgraded, and it looks like a magazine rather than a, just a paper type directory. So I wanted to say thank you to the chamber. Perfect. Thank you. Nothing for trusting me. Mayor Pro Tem. Real quick, I just want to say thank you so much to Mike Flores and Jesse for your hard work on that recodification process. I'm sorry that I couldn't see you in that. Um, I couldn't include you in that shout out, but I understand the huge undertaking that goes into that and the attention to detail that you guys put into that. I mean, that's not something they tell you about on a public works job description. So thank you so much for your hard work on that. I really appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks to everybody for doing everything that you guys do as individual trustees and the projects you guys head up and things you put together. I mean, we all do this together as a team and thanks to the town staff for kicking butt every day and um, taking on the chin sometimes. I mean, we got to do that. Um, you guys are doing a great job. So thank you. I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Um, that's all I got. Uh, I think at this point, we need to go into an executive session. So the board will now consider entering an executive session should the board elect to enter an executive session. Members of the audience not required for the exec session will be asked to leave this room and will be removed from Zoom. I mean, the executive session is going to be for the purpose of considering a purchase, acquisition, lease, or transfer of real property pursuant of section 24-6-4024A uh, dash dash regarding potential property acquisition within the town of Wellington municipal purposes as required by CRS 24-6-4022D.5 2A and 2E. The executive session proceedings will be electronically recorded and the recording will be preserved for 90 days through July 24th, 2023. May I get a motion to enter executive session? So moved. I'll second. Okay. Make it a roll call, please. Certainly. Trustee Gator? Yes. Trustee Mason? Yes. Trustee Daly? Yes. Trustee Teets? Yes. Trustee Wiegand? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McDonald? Yes. Mayor Shosey? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Sergeant Sherry. Man, we, we're only 30 mi 39 minutes back. I know. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs>